Hello dear RimWorlders and welcome to my RimWorld Royalty Guide. In this video I'm going to explain everything you need to know to go royal and be successful with it. Also I'm going to talk about the special advantages of being royal and the downsides if you don't do it right and the downsides even if you do it right. If you like this kind of content feel free to drop a like on this video or a subscription on my channel to help me provide more useful information and entertainment for you. So let's get started. First off, the royalty ladder is a hierarchy where you have certain levels which are just free. The freeholder and the human ranks are just for free. They bring you just a spell cost and that's it. No downsides, just the goodies, no requirements, nothing. It's pretty cool because you can basically uh, grind up the rank for everybody where you want to have it. All you need to know there is the total amount of royal favor can't exceed the amount of 12 points. Once you hit 13, you hit the acolyte rank and that's where the stuff gets demanding. So acolytes are the first pe royal people who have actual needs. You have to satisfy a certain amount of things before you can uh, promote them without suffering severe mood penalties. <laughs> so. Being an acolyte brings you the advantage of calling a trooper squad if you want to. A trooper squad is roughly uh, competitive with um, one of these guys here, the Outlander Union, so it's pretty strong being able to just uh, summon a drop pot squad as, <laughs> as you need it, but it's not uh, insanely strong. These guys will flee under pressure and, well, just basically a summonable squad of cannon fodder which is super useful for all manner of different purposes. The first uh, use is free and then it goes on kind of a cooldown and if you use it during that cooldown it will cost you goodwill with the Imperial faction. So that was the advantage. Let's go to the downsides. First off, acolytes need royal attire. That must be at least a ruffled shirt or a top hat for the, uh, for the gentleman or a, uh, I don't know, the, there's some, yeah, here, female, ruffle shirt, ladies hat, that's the equivalent for the ladies. So that means before you should promote into the Acolyte rank, be sure to research the Noble Apparel tech, because without this technology, you won't be able to clothe them correctly. Big downside, makes them quite unhappy, increases the risk of mental breakdowns. Next up, the bedroom of a uh, acolyte has some requirements too. It has to be floored and has to feature it a little bit. Nothing wild, but make sure the flooring is down. Next up is the throne room and it's the key requirement for all of the nobles. A throne room must have a throne, of course, a flooring and some certain accessories um, depending on the rank you're at. When you go for the Acolyte rank, you don't need too much. You only need the throne, you need at least 24 tiles size, flooring of course, two lit braziers and that's that. From the food aspect, you only need to know that they can still eat simple meals and they won't clean anymore. Acolytes are pretty easy to maintain since they only need some uh, furniture demands and after that you basically don't need to take care of much more than the attire. So going for Acolyte, once you have the requirements down of the sleeping room and the throne room and the clothing, boom, easy. Brings you some uh, more side casting abilities and the option to summon people, which is really strong. And next rank, the knight or the dame, is the end of uh, what I would call the lower or the middle field of the royalty uh, chain. After that, the higher end of the chain begins. Yeah, I would consider Freeholder and Yeoman as a low tier, Acolyte and Knight are the mid tier, and Baron and Count are the high tier. So, with the Knight, you get the ability to trade with the Royals, and that's where the fun starts. You get access to high tech weapons, bionics, technologies, armor, lots of good things. You can also um, still call the Troopers, of course. The Apparel requirements don't increase with the knight. The only thing that really changes when you go for the knight is the 
bedroom has to be a little bit bigger, and the throne room also needs a harp together with some columns. So make sure you have at the knight rank at least the harp technology research to make sure that the knight can or the dame can enjoy some music. Would make your people unhappy as well if you don't. So that's that. Also keep in mind that beginning from the knight title uh, or knight dame title they don't eat simple meals anymore so you have to have a supply of fine meals from that rank on a lot of requirements already so keep th those in mind and then comes the praetor rank which is uh the link between the middle ranks and the higher ranks as a praetor you can already call a janissary squad which is resembling a strike force or a raiding party of the uh, high-tech squad of the high-tech faction which is pretty big so minimum apparel quality is new there so or is it new yeah it is new which means um praetors won't wear poor quality or worse without being unhappy with that on top of that comes the normal uh requirement of the attire of course the bedroom needs some more impressiveness the throne room needs now more columns be uh, be than before but that's nothing Nothing too much changes here. They just drop more different works, work types. At the end of a royal career, your royals won't be doing much work anymore. So after the Praetor comes the Baron or the Baroness. And uh, one thing I want to say about Praetor rank and the coming ranks after that, your royals will start to make decrees which basically force your colony to do something the royal wants to do so once you go for knight and praetor ranks be sure that the royalty content will pretty much dictate your gameplay to some degree sometimes more sometimes less keep that's pretty important to know after that the baron uh, title gets uh brings us the ability to call a cataphract squad which is really awesome strong <laughs> And uh, I just need to be sure that I don't get them wrong here. So Praetor, Baron, Praetor, Count. Wait a sec. After a Praetor comes the Baron, yeah. It's a little bit uh, confusing from times. So you see the requirements of the bedroom uh, are rising. There you need the Royal Bed. Then you need the Grand Meditation Thrones. And there goes the drape requirement, the harpsichord requirement. I'm not going to run through the other ranks because I think at this point you should have noticed that there's a certain pattern. So basically before you promote, always check out that you have the, certain, the necessary technologies researched, which are harp, harpsichord and the piano and the royal apparel technology. These are really important. Also what you're going to need across the board are uh, these fine tiled floorings which are insanely costly in terms of uh, stone costs you basically need a chunk per tile and overall accommodating the royals is a big resource requirement and i would always say going past the yeoman title is some something you need to prepare for you get rewarded by access to more side casting skills more equipment things and more support skills but keep in mind that you have to accommodate these uh, requirements at all times my personal go-to is i never promote further than i can uh, sustain easily like the the level of my colony overall would determine how royal my colony gets but that's up to you how you want to do that the last thing i want to talk about is the royal ascent quest which is uh the finishing quest for the royalty dlc it works quite similar like the uh crash landed spaceship it is a, an alternative ending to the game where you need to host a count of the empire and make him happy for a certain time and you'll get attacked and the reward for that is that your colonists can go for a spaceship and leave the planet so overall the royalty deals the royalty branch gives you 
the, uh, <laughs> the opportunity to make your game harder but gain some superpowers in return. One last thing I want to mention is that you can sell off gold or prisoners to the royals to change in exchange for royal favor. Royal favor is also gained for quests. I wanted to mention that at least once in the video but we're pretty much at the end already there's not so much more to talk about the requirements of the royals are the biggest issue you have to accommodate them you have to fulfill them but once you have those go for it there's more upside than downside to it the decree thing is something you have to take care about basically make sure that your colony is able to produce items at a steady supply and is stable overall don't rush the royals. Rushing royal people in your colony is a certain way of creating downfalls and misery. I tried that, believe me, it's not cool. If you don't want to believe me, go for it and tell me about it in the comments down below. So that's that. I hope I was able to give you a little bit of an overview how to go royal and see you guys next time. Bye bye.